Welcome to Know This Live. I'm Zinkley Esamwa. This year, President Biden convened a meeting on gun safety to address a rise in crime nationwide. He met with Attorney General Merrick Garland as well as local elected leaders and law enforcement officials amid a sharp rise in shootings seen around the country as we reopen from the pandemic. Joining me today is Adam Winkler. He's a professor at UCLA School of Law and is an expert on constitutional law and gun policy. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course, and I know that during this week's meeting, President Biden acknowledged that he has been working on gun reform for decades, which is true. How would you characterize the status of gun safety legislation in the U.S.? Well, at the federal level, there seems to be no real prospects for significant reform. Uh, with the filibuster in the Senate and the Republican Party completely against any kind of gun safety reform, it doesn't seem like anything could get through uh, the Senate at this point. So what we're left with is President Biden using executive actions and executive orders to try to uh, revise our gun laws. And there's really only so much he can do in that front. Uh, that's only tinkering with the margins of the law and can't really make a significant change in American gun policy. And I'm glad you mentioned that because Biden did unveil a new comprehensive, what he calls a comprehensive plan to reduce gun violence in the United States. That includes targeting illegal gun sales and offering money to police departments for gun safety enforcement. But his authority, as you state, can only allow him to do so much. So what can Congress do? Well, Congress could do a lot if they could get something through the Senate. You could have universal background checks. You could have a federal law that provides funding for red flag uh, programs at the state level. And you could have increased enforcement of federal gun laws uh, with, great, with greater funding for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the main federal agency uh, that uh, regulates guns in America. So we could do things with legislation, uh, but we're going to have to look at the state level for reform right now, because at the federal level, there's really nothing happening. And the reality is, when we talk about gun safety, these are not new conversations. And often, when gun safety is brought to Congress, the issue does not make it very far, most often because Republicans cite the right to bear arms. And you've studied the Second Amendment very thoroughly, but have come to a contrary conclusion. Can you walk us through what that is? Well, it's certainly the case that Americans have long enjoyed a right to keep and bear arms, whether found in the Constitution or whether found in state law um, and policy. People have always had access to guns in America as a general matter. Um, however, there still is a place for good and effective gun regulation. And things like universal background checks or red flag laws uh, don't violate the Second Amendment. And uh, those laws should not be questioned uh, on the grounds that they violate that constitutional provision. And you mentioned background checks. What would background checks do? And what's the holdup? Why haven't we seen that universally implemented? Well, we have a partial background check system where today, if you're a federally licensed gun dealer who's regularly in the business of selling guns, you have to do a background check every time you sell a firearm. However, you don't have to be a federally licensed dealer uh, in order to sell guns if you're just doing it occasionally and it's not your main business. And as a result, we have a lot of gun sales, somewhere between 20 and 40 percent that are uh, perfectly legal, but do not occur with a background check. This raises significant problems of people who are felons or who are otherwise prohibited from purchasing firearms, finding someone through classified ads at a gun show or even at a gun range. Uh, and purchasing a firearm without a background check. So universal background checks can help close that loophole. And I want to turn to a specific state. I know that last month, uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed a law that will allow Texans to carry handguns without a license or training. 20 other states have similar laws on the books, but it also comes after a number of mass shootings in Texas. What effects do laws like this have on this particular state, if any? Well, there has been a very vigorous debate in the social science literature about the effect of permissive carry laws, uh, laws that allow people to carry guns on the streets easily, uh, with some social scientists believing that they reduce crime, others finding that they increase crime in some ways. It's very difficult to get a real clear handle on exactly what these laws do, in part because, let's face it, there are already a lot of guns out there in America. And in Texas, for instance, a lot of people are already carrying guns on the streets. So this law probably won't make 
a huge change, but it does represent the sort of latest front in the gun wars. As the gun safety reform movement is pushing for laws like bans on assault weapons in so-called blue states, in red states, we're seeing more permissive laws being adopted, such as this permitless concealed carry. And another recent development is that Biden has nominated David Chipman to lead the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. He spent 20 years at that agency and is currently an advisor to a gun reform policy group, which is giving some moderate Democrats pause. Why do you think there's a holdup on his confirmation? Well, truth be told, we know that the holdup is largely because of uh, gun rights advocates opposing this appointment. And in truth, it's not even that personal to this particular nominee. Uh, this is a position that over the last 15 years has only been filled for, I think, a grand total of two years. And that's because the NRA and its allies uh, continue to uh, reject any nominee for this position. And the reality is, the reason we're talking about this right now is because, as mentioned earlier, there is a surge in gun violence across the nation. In your assessment, what is the impact of U.S. gun policy on the public? Well, our gun policy is such that we, our policy is to make it easier for people to have guns and for people to have lots of them. And of course, that leads to more gun violence. It's, there's no doubt that guns can be an effective tool of self-defense. Um, but at the same time, we have a very heavily armed society, and the result is that uh, far more gun deaths every year uh, per capita than any other uh, industrialized nation in the world. Um, there's simply a lot of guns, and as a result, people can have access to them to commit suicide, to commit crimes. Uh, there are accidental shootings, and obviously we have the mass shootings that have become, unfortunately, uh, so commonplace in America these days. Well, Adam Winkler, professor at UCLA School of Law, thank you for being here and sharing your insights. Thanks so much for having me. Of course, and thanks to everyone for watching. This has been Know This Live. I'm Zinclay Esamois.